The last time humans set foot on the moon was in December of 1972 during the Apollo 17 mission. And at the rate that moon missions are progressing today, it's no question that we'll cross the 50 year mark with no manned moon missions. With Mars, you could say that it's extremely hard in a variety of different realms, and this applies to the moon as well. But the key difference between the two is that we've already been to the moon several times. So why did we ditch the moon for half a century? Well, the first and most obvious reason is of course, budgetary restrictions. In 2005, NASA estimated that it would cost $104 billion to get people back to the moon, which is the same as $133 billion today. This is actually not too bad, and NASA could very well accomplish this over 10 to 15 years if they devoted about half of their $20 billion annual budget towards the moon. However, NASA's responsibilities are far greater than simply sending manned exploration and colonization missions to outer space. For instance, they have to split this funding among the James Webb Space Telescope, developing their new rocket called Space Launch System, and sending rovers and probes to other planets, their moons, the sun, and even outside the solar system. Due to NASA's wide focus, they are unable to devote so much capital towards putting people back on the moon. Also, it's not like NASA is just burning through cash. They have actually significantly increased their efficiency since the 1960s and 70s, as they should. Throughout the 60s and 70s, the Apollo program cost $25.8 billion, which is the same as $264 billion today. Considering that their new estimate is just half of that at $133 billion, they have no doubt made some serious progress even if they were to overrun the budget to 150 or 160 billion. But this does raise a different concern. How were they able to fund 264 billion dollars in the 1960s, but they can't fund just half of that over the next 50 years? Well, as you guys probably already knew, NASA's budget has been getting slashed for decades at this point, and it's far worse than you probably expected as we are often shown budget numbers in the 20 plus billion dollar range, making us think that it's actually not that bad. But here's the thing, they received a solid 4.5% of the federal budget. In relation to today's 4.79 trillion dollar budget, that's the same as NASA receiving 215 billion dollars per year, or about 10 times what they actually receive today. Of course, that might not make sense today. But even just half of that would still be $100 billion, which would give NASA much more liberty in actually pushing forward space technology. However, this is very unlikely to happen because of one major limitation, which is public support. And I am not just talking about a lack of enthusiasm or energy that we saw in the 1960s and 70s. Though we and our little community here on YouTube are eager to get people back to the moon and Mars, this is not the case with the average American. 42.9% of Americans straight up oppose NASA returning to the moon with humans because they don't believe that it is a priority at this time. And another 19.2% believe that we should simply send robots back. Considering this, only a little over a third of Americans support the idea of NASA returning to the moon with humans in the imminent future. This isn't necessarily because the average American isn't excited about space. Rather, they simply believe that Mars is the next logical step, as it's estimated that 63% of Americans support a crewed Mars mission. And this of course brings us into politics. Now, I'm not talking about political benefit like with Mars, but rather political risk. With Mars, there is no political benefit, as the mission would take 10 plus years so it wouldn't help the candidate's political campaign. With the moon on the other hand, a mission could be completed within one term, especially if you build off of the previous president's space proposal instead of scrapping it all together like we have seen time and time again. But politicians shy away from this prospect due to political risk. Carrying out a moon mission is evidently very dangerous and could go wrong. And if it does, well, 
this is not the best look for the president's re-election campaign. But wait a minute, don't presidents take such risks all the time in order to potentially boost political support? We're going to build a wall. It's going to be built. While this is true, the issue with a manned mission to the moon is that the political risk to benefit is simply not worth it because we've already gone to the moon. Since we've already gone to the moon six times, going to the moon a seventh time wouldn't really be a wow moment for the average person. This is actually starting to change now as we haven't returned to the moon in nearly 50 years, which has started to renew interest in the moon. However, that was not the case through most of the 70s, 80s, and even 90s. Getting to the moon wouldn't win over that much political support, while failing to get there would reflect poorly on the administration. But even more importantly, in my opinion, the biggest reason we haven't returned to the moon is that the USSR is no more. We often like to think that we would have eventually gone to the moon without the space race or the cold war due to our instinctive yearning to explore and advance ourselves. But if this was really true, I think we'd agree that we would already have humans on Mars. So though it doesn't sound so wholesome, I believe the key to putting men on the moon so early on is almost single-handedly the USSR. And it's not just a case of, oh, we're not pushing ourselves as much because we don't have competition. This isn't necessarily true as the moon wasn't the result of healthy competition, but rather unhealthy competition. You see, the traits of healthy competition are pushing forward the entire field, furthering personal potential, honoring mutually held values, and valuing the journey just as much as the outcome. In the case of the space race, healthy competition would entail projects such as the International Space Station, the Space Shuttle Program, the current race to colonize the moon, and the current race to colonize Mars. But you'd be kidding yourself if you think that the Apollo program was bred with healthy competition, as it was basically the definition of unhealthy competition. The traits of unhealthy competition include scarcity and fear, seeking validation and attention, putting down others, and most importantly, winning no matter the cost. Starting with scarcity and fear, the Apollo program was started during the height of the Cold War, during which the fear of a nuclear war was at all-time highs. As a result, the plan to put humans on the moon was more of a response to the USSR succeeding in putting humans in orbit and the fear that they would likewise leave behind the US in terms of space technology in general. Moving on to validation and attention, the US was seeking validation and attention from countries around the world. But this wasn't really for the revolutionary scientific feat. If that was the case, it wouldn't actually be unhealthy competition. Rather, the validation and attention the US was seeking was for their economic and political power that made such a revolutionary scientific feat possible. In other words, they were trying to prove the superiority of a capitalist society. And this of course goes along with putting down others, as the US was putting down socialist countries in the process of boasting their own system. Lastly, as for winning at all costs, well, this was basically NASA's motto. We've all heard the famous quote, failure is not an option. This is a phenomenal approach when dealing with crewed missions as failure should not be an option. But when you're trying to develop new technology, new prototypes, and new ideas, this is a terrible idea. Finding new innovative solutions requires trial and error and avoiding the stage will likely slow and even limit progression. Also, something else to consider is that maybe it's not that NASA's budget is low today, but rather their budget was extremely high in the 1960s. No matter how much money it took, no matter how much manpower it took, and no matter the innovations they were sacrificing by rushing to accomplish one narrow goal, the US didn't care as we strive to win no matter the cost. So for the best or the worst, the initial drive to succeed in a manned moon mission was largely due to unhealthy competition with the USSR. And the lack of this unhealthy competition has, in my opinion, been the key limiting factor when it comes to returning humans to the moon. But looking forward, things are looking much better 
as the scene for healthy competition is doing better than ever before. We have SpaceX, Blue Origin, Boeing, Virgin Galactic, NASA themselves and much much more. And as these companies are participating in a healthy competitive environment where they are truly looking to advance space exploration and colonization as opposed to just flexing national might, we may for once finally see the timelines put out by these organizations come true. If you guys are excited for the future of crewed missions, then make sure to drop a like and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari and I'll see you guys on the next one.